harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. William, is that a thumbs up, Dom? We got a thumbs up from Liv. We're back. We're here, back in the studio, and we've been away, traveling. We go, we come back. I'm liking the new studio. I just had a go at the dartboard there. Yeah, you got a, a miss, a miss, and an eight. Is that good? That's It's not bad, mm. but I feel like we need better darts. I feel those darts, the flights are not... Well, it's the flights. It's not what I would expect. Mm, mm. What's that phrase about carpenters blaming tools? I don't know. Mm. But, um, so, some people have been saying they were sad. Uh, the YouTube uh, listeners. Mm. Listeners, watchers, your watchers, yeah, viewers. And listeners. Are we sure? Were slightly disappointed that they didn't get to see the studio. So... Cut away to dartboard. What a wonderful dartboard. Look at that, but we need better darts. Mm, maybe at the same time we could cut away to the uh, Billion Dom Eat the World uh, food and beverage uh, shelf. The shelf of goodness. The shelf I like of, to call oh, it. nice. Okay, we'll call it the shelf of goodness from now on. There's other shelves here that has uh, our award. Mm. I don't think it is an award, but no. I'm calling it an, yeah, award. Let's call it an award. We got 100,000 viewers on uh, YouTube subscribers. We want 200,000. Of course we do. We'll never be happy, Tom. No, no, we won't. Once we get 200,000, I want a million. Yeah, yeah. I've just skipped half a million. That's fine. Was that half a million? Matt's. Half a million? 500,000. Mm. Uh, but doesn't that end up being 700,000? Because 200,000 plus 500,000 is 700,000, isn't it? Yeah, but then then another 300,000, we'll get a million. Then that's a million. But once we get a million, I want two million. Yeah, of course. How many people are in the world? Is it? Six billion. That's how many I want. Every single person mm -hmm. subscribing to the show. That's a lot of pressure. But once we start doing cutaways of the dartboard in the shelf of goodness, we'll probably get it. I think I agree with you. Hey, a quick game of League of Legends I had this morning. Without you, sans Billy Boyd. And guess who I was playing against in mid lane? Let me, hold on. You know I can never remember any of their names, you but... Will, you'll remember this guy. Oh, well... Oh, it's a clue. Oh, it's a guy. So straight away, 50% are mm -hmm. gone. Mid laner. Uh, mid laner guy. Heimerdinger. Correct answer. How did it go? I beat, I beat him up in mid lane, but unfortunately our team surrendered. I didn't surrender because you know me. I'm not a surrenderer. Never. No retreat, no not, surrender, you shout. So we got two dragons. They got two dragons very quickly after that. And then we were going for the third dragon. Someone put a surrender vote in. And I said, no, no, we'll get no. this dragon and we'll, we'll beat him. We'll be all right. Four out of the five sur surrendered and we were done. You know what that was you just did there? A League of Legends update. <laughs> so there's your League of Legends update. I um, played a game yesterday. Mm. We were doing quite well. I was you yeah. in the middle. Mm. And uh, we were doing quite good. We had a good set. Uh, we had a good... Who's the guy that takes you into his world? Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser. A good Mordekaiser. And then the other two, one of them quit. And then the other one quit. Oh, you're in a three-man team? Three against five, and we were almost doing it. Oh. We were in their base, and I was like, if we win this three yeah, against five... Epic, epic. We had a great modder, guys. But you, you didn't. No, we didn't win. Oh, that's a shame. Well, we have been travelling the length and breadth of the country, haven't we? We've been, in this very short period here, um, over the last few months, we've been to Dallas, Texas. We've been to Orlando, mm -hmm. Florida. We've been to Calgary in Canada. Denver, Colorado. We're also doing a live podcast in Boston. That's in August. Yeah, but, it, but you know, it's coming. Okay, it might and, sell out, and then and, you won't get to see it. And Toronto, which will be our last one. And uh, also the, um, the Lone Rangers, mate. That's true. Toronto. Toronto, yeah. yeah. So you can find all that information at Fan Expo. Get your tickets. We uh, tend to try and eat food or drink drinks from the local area, mm -hmm. which is exciting, and maybe we can share it out with people. But hey, should we do a little bit of housekeeping? Housekeeping! Oh, I just found a you to keep a house all clean and true. Love it. Very cool at the end there, Dom. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, I went, I went renegade. I went jazz because of our recent guests, the Potash Twins. Who Lovely jazz. Trumpet. Fantastic musicians. And uh, they made me a little bit more inspired to uh, go jazz. And I couldn't believe, as soon as it finished, I thought, I never told my favorite gag. Well, oh, the trumpet train. 
When I was younger, I had a trumpet tree in my garden, but a man from the council came and rooted to toot. <laughs> Fantastic Scottish joke there. <laughs> only, it only works in Scotland. <laughs> That's true. Hey, so th- I'm going to read this one because this Go is on, a, a subject very close to my heart here. From Hannah Hubner in Tyler, Texas, who said, my question for you has to do with Chinese food. Lovely. She lives in Warrington, very close oh, to yeah. Manchester, like England, Warrington. for a year. And when I was there, I was pretty surprised by how different UK Chinese food is from the US. I like both, but I miss the duck pancakes and prawn crackers. Mm. I prefer one or the other, UK Chinese or US Chinese, uh, Chinese, and which food item is your favorite? Well, you know this. Apart from an all-you-can-eat buffet, which would be my last meal, because then I would just gently eat a tiny little wafer-thin piece of cucumber. Forever. And when the wardens came in, I'd say, I'm not, I'm not finished. I'm not done yet. Not done yet. You know, yeah. all-you-can-eat buffet. Apart from that, my last meal would be crispy duck and pancakes. Sorry, all the ducks out there that are listening. And, and I don't pancakes. eat that often, and pancakes. But it's a very thin pancake, a little bit of hoisin sauce. Mm-hmm. Love a bit of duck, mm-hmm. some scallions, or spring onions. Spring onions, kind of like strips of them, mm-hmm. and then strips, strips of cucumber. Right? Oh. It's fantastic, isn't it? What about you? What would your last meal be? What's your oh. favourite meal ever? Um, oh, that's a good question. Mm. I don't know. Maybe, don't maybe know. a, maybe a Thai curry. I think <gasps> a green, green curry or so with potatoes. Mm. Weirdly, mm, they soak up all that curry oh, taste. But Chinese, US or UK, is what uh, Hannah's asking mm. you. I mean, both both places do it well. I mean, they don't do the crispy duck and pancakes thing here in the US as well as in the UK. But then I think maybe their noodles are a little better over here. Mm-hmm. And I have a veg. I told you the other week. I have a, a veggie fried rice from my local place, Chi Dynasty, which I crave when I'm away mm. from it. Well, for me, and it's you know, it's it's been a big couple of weeks for. United States of America because you get the 4th of July you see mm. and that's a big that's a big holiday mm. but and I, I, I love lots and lots of things about America I think mm. it's a great country mm. but when it comes to Chinese food whether if it was in UK or US I'm 100% UK mm. I love the curries yeah they do a curry sauce oh, don't they? Yeah. I love curry sauce and chips oh, that, I mean prawn crackers is just lovely I'll tell you what happened Dom I was about 8 years old no, maybe a bit older, 10 maybe. I'd never had Chinese food. I'm, I'm living in Glasgow, and one of my friends, I'm up his house, and they got Chinese takeaway. And one of his uncles said to me, have you, have you had Chinese? I said, no, I haven't. I've never tried it. And he gave me a prawn cracker with a piece of chicken out his chicken curry and an onion on it. Dumb. It's the greatest thing I ever put in my mouth. Yeah, yeah, sounds fantastic. And you've been chasing that dragon ever since. I've been chasing that perfect Mm. mouthful Mm. the the whole rest of my life. I have a vague remember. I have a vague recollection that didn't you and your wife get really into a Chinese place near your place in Glasgow, and it was your Friday night feast type thing. That's my wife. That's Ali. Mm. The 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 China house on Shelton Road. Hello, China house. Glasgow, and their uh, chicken satay. Well, of course. With uh, prawn crackers is my wife's favourite food in the world. And she just went back to Scotland there. She had 10 of them. She only went for seven days, and I think she had it four nights. Good girl. I mean, well done. Good for you, Alison. One day she, she, she was speaking to me, and she says, I don't know what to do today. I'm not doing anything. I said, get yourself to the China. Yeah, yeah. Do your house. Yeah, treat yourself. She says, I had it last night. I said, Dharma. Yeah, yeah. Go and have it for lunch. You'll be a long time dead. Hey, that's what they tell you. Dom. Well, thank you, Hannah Hobner. That was a wonderful question. Wasn't that nice? Now, what about you? Do you want to read this next one? Right, wait, you hear this. This Ooh. is Michael Guernsey, Location Unknown. Oh, from Location Unknown. There's a lot of people from there. I've got a question for you guys. Have either of you played the Halo games? If you haven't, I highly recommend them. Ooh. I believe their story, music, and world building of both the games and books are equal to Lord of the Rings in quality and size. Lofty. A book there. Okay. The first five Halo games, uh, the Bungie. <laughs> Bungie, era, that's the company that makes them Bungie. Uh, Bungie era. Yeah. Are some of the greatest stories ever told next to Tolkien's works. What do you think of that, Dom? Well, I have played the Halo games. The 
first Halo game is has one of the greatest multiplayer modes of all time. I'm surprised you and I have not played that together. Tell me it's called Hello Halo. It's not. It should have been. Well, I, what, one of the first jokes that I ever wrote yeah. was um, I've fallen in love with a girl who plays video games. She had me at Halo. <laughs> hey! I quite like that. Uh, that's very good, that original Dom Mon show there. Um, <coughs> so the original Halo, <clears throat> yeah, fantastic multiplayer, relatively simple. The single player mode, I genuinely think that you would love. Right. A guy, you play a guy called Master Chief, who for a while there, Vigo Mortensen was tipped to play, but it didn't happen. Right. Round about the Lord of the Rings kind of huge notoriety. Master Chief. Master Chief. And Master Chief is on his own, usually on a planet fighting aliens, but there's a lot of kind of empty space. So for maybe a couple of minutes in the level, mm -hmm. excuse me. All the best. Yeah. You might be just searching around a ship that seems to be in disarray and there's yeah. a couple of sparks and it's dark and maybe something's leaking. You think, what's going on here? It's a bit of a ghost what's, ship. What's leaking here? And then you turn a corner and there's a bunch of aliens. Brilliant world. I mean, equal to the Lord of the Rings in quality and size. That's a, that's a lofty claim. I mean, you're throwing that out there, it's though. It's big. But I've had some of my favorite multiplayer experiences playing Halo. I don't think I've played five of them. I think I might have played three. Great game. You'd love it. I'll, I'll try it. Is, it. is it still going? Is it? Is it? Yeah, you can play it on PC, but it's kind of it's a classic Microsoft Xbox game. But I think you can play it on PC. Are you going to join me in the Elder Scrolls Online world? I mean, Skyrim's my all-time favorite game, but the Elder Scrolls Online gets doesn't get a lot of love hey. from the online community. I'm just hey, saying. Hey, I'm part of that community now. I'm sorry, I don't mean to upset you, Bills. I'm going on there, and I want you to come with me. I'll come with you. There's no. I mean, I'd love to play Skyrim we have with to, you. Take our time. Take our time. We've got a guest coming up shortly, and we can see him over there. And I think he's an Elder Scrolls guy. I yeah, it looks Elder like Scrolls. it. We'll talk Elder Scrolls when we get on there. But you've got to take your time. And I think what we'll do, Dom, is we'll have a day down my house, and we'll set up our, our uh, accounts, and then we'll just take an evening, a nice bottle of wine, <gasps> and we'll just... Pick our character. He said, "Pick your characters. Pick your characters. One of the best moments. Spend a long time making sure it looks exactly mm -hmm. how you want it. So mm -hmm. let's do that, yeah. Dom. The origins of that is great. Well, your computer is, if you don't mind me saying, knackered. Sorry, Billy. Sorry to we bring up that hornet's nest, but it is knackered. We could do it on PlayStation. We could do it on. PlayStation. And then it might be then easier how, for how me. How can both the two of us play it on the PlayStation? We'll have two two PlayStations, two, two televisions. Oh, two PlayStations. I see that. Yeah. Okay. Also, your son, who yeah, I'm totally up for it, but your son, who doesn't seem to be that much of a gamer anymore, yeah. you said, just has a gaming computer just sat in his room, but you won't touch it. No, what he did last week? Unplugged it all. It now, it's now sitting in the corner of his room. It's not even on a desk. What's he put in that space? Nothing. It's just emptiness. Know what he's going to put in it? A sofa. Lovely. Just he, a lounge with his pals. He's decided, I don't want to play games. I just want to sit down. Good for him. He's he's um, he's the exact opposite of most kids his age, and that's one of my favorite things about you. I love it. Here's a here's a comment here on our YouTube Go on, uh, page, thefriendshipunionpodcast.com. No, it's not even dot com. It's just the Friendship Onion Podcast. Regarding Top Gun, oh, says I have a I have to call you out on your exposition complaint from Billy. I've been called out. Mm -hmm. No, he says this. Oh, this is from Trap Johnson. Nice. He sounds like he's a fighter pilot straight away. It says, yes, everyone in the room knew what the ex expositor was saying. However, the expositor also knew that he needs to perpetually remind Maverick to not push the issue at risk of stuff going impressively sideways. Uh huh. Okay. It was not exposition alone. It was a character beat of, I know you do reckless stuff. Uh -huh. Please don't do that now. Okay, that's what okay I'm well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Uh... This is your rebuttal. I'm going to, here is my rebuttal mm -hmm. on that, Dom. Yes. And I'll need to watch the movie again, and I've been looking for an excuse to watch it again. Oh, I can't wait. But I think Maverick wasn't even in the room when he started that exposition. I think he was on his motorbike I coming in and arriving room. late. I think the general was in the room, wasn't he? The general was in the room, and everybody involved in the Top Gun, you know, whatever it is they're trying to do, get to Mach 10. Is it Mach or Mac? I think in the States they say Mac, but surely it's Mach. 
That's what. I, but then, every time I do it, I feel like a, Mach, a, like a German spy or something. Mach ten. Mach. Oh, isn't isn't uh, when that speech is going on? Isn't Tom Cruise kind of at Mach five? Oh, he's already or up. Four. He's no, I not. think I think it's before he even arrives. But surely the general would say, "Don't you get in that plane, Pete?" Right, right, Pete. He'd call him Pete. He wouldn't no. call him that. No, he'd Peter. Call him. Right. Or Peter. would he? But he's the boss. So Maverick. Wouldn't he, dem- wouldn't he demean him by calling him by his first name? Oi, Peter. Maybe. He'd say, "Don't get in that plane." No. I think I think Mav has gone up already, and he's like, "Look, there's nothing you can do." So our last flight, I think that's what happens. He's like, "Look, let's just take it up." What's the general going to do? We're already up in the air. Anyway. I need to watch it again. You watch but, it again. Um, it definitely struck me as he doesn't need to be making this speech right now. Hiring. If that word doesn't get you excited to find your next favorite team member, you need the hiring partner that makes finding quality candidates easy. You need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Find great talent faster through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Mm. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed Data US. Indeed puts you in control of what you pay. You set your must-have job requirements and only pay for the applications that meet them. There's a transparent flat fee per application and you can pause your job posting whenever you want. When you sponsor an Indeed post, you're 4.5 times more likely to get a hire, according to Indeed Data Worldwide. The right candidate is doing everything they can to find you. And if you use Indeed, you can be sure you're doing everything you can to find them too. And Indeed's doing something no other job site has done. Now with Indeed Business Only, pay for quality applications matching the sponsored job description. Visit Indeed.com slash onion to start hiring today. Just go to indeed.com slash onion. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Dom. William. Do you know what I really love? Mm. Liquid IV. Oh. I really, really enjoy drinking those things. Mm. And it's good when, like, you're working out or these hot summer months. Oh, it's hot. You know what I mean? And you're feeling like, I've got to really keep hold of my hydration here. Mm. Make sure I'm drinking enough water. You told me the other day that you prefer drinking liquid IV than water. Well, I do. I like it. Like, say I'm outside doing a quick workout, doing some squats, lunges, Mm. and then I get a nice, delicious lemon and lime or something, or strawberry. They'll get passion fruit. Mm. All these different flavors. Mm. And Dom, apparently, a liquid IV, 16 ounces of water, that will hydrate you faster. Two times faster than just water alone. Isn't that amazing? That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, it also contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C, mm. made with premium ingredients. It's non-GMO, free from gluten, free from dairy and soy. And for every purchase, they'll donate a serving to someone in need. Brilliant. And to date, Liquid IV has donated over 24 million servings globally. Fantastic. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco. Or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code ONION at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration Today using promo code ONION at liquidiv.com. Since the last time we uh, podcasted together, I saw the Baz Luhrmann um, Elvis operatic piece, and I very much enjoyed it. No, he's a king of rock and roll, isn't he? Fantastic performance by your man. I think he's called Austin Butler. That might not be right. It might be Aaron. I think it's Austin Butler. Amazing. I wouldn't say necessarily is the spitting image of Elvis, but no, that's not doesn't necessary. Have to be, it doesn't have to be. But his swagger and his poise and his love of music and love of all different types of music and his style, brilliant. I love the film. I was swept away with it. And the music, as a musician, the music in it is incredible. I'll check it out. We should go. What was your favorite Elvis um, time? Uh, favorite Elvis time, probably kind of mystery train. That's all right, Mama, Ready Teddy, kind of mm-hmm. 50s, 
56, 57 era, pre-army. Right, okay, yeah. But then I also like when he immediately comes back and throws off all of those very quick songs post-war kind of in the ghetto. And, it, and there's a great version of it, If I Can Dream, in this thing as well. What about you? What's your favorite Elvis? Wait, what's your favorite Elvis era music and what's your favorite Elvis era looks? Music, comeback. The comeback special? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, liked, I, I liked that. That was a good band and they sounded great and really? he was amazing. Well, in that Baz Luhrmann film, the way that they put together the If I Can Dream moment is incredible. I look forward to seeing it. No, we should watch it together. And uh, looks wise, I love it. Uh, like I said, I think last week, I love the movies. So, and oh, I love yeah, the I strange. love the innocent movies. Strange, you know the Blue Hawaii, yeah, and etc. King, King Creole. Well, that was more. I, I like right, even the more innocent ones than that. Right, right. Have you seen him when he comes onto the Frank Sinatra show and he sings? Frank sings Love Me Tender. Right. And Elvis sings Witchcraft and they switch roles. No. Elvis is like about as good looking as I've ever seen him. He's he's very thin, he's got his little gaunt, his hair's very bouffant. Very, very good looking at that point. Lovely, yeah. That's my favorite looks. I'm hey, we've got some voicemails. Should we do a couple of yeah. voicemails just before our illustrious guest comes on? Live tea. Hi Billy, hi Dom. My name is Aaron. I'm from Malakoff, Texas. First of all, thank y'all so much for coming to the Dallas Fan Expo. Um, it was a dream to meet y'all. Y'all are so genuine and so sweet. And thank you for what you do for your fans, taking time out of your lives to, to meet us. Uh, I wanted to know what your favorite memory was from the Fan Expo, whether it was a panel or something that happened backstage that nobody else saw. Um, definitely my two favorite memories were getting to hear Billy impromptu sing The Last Goodbye. I was crying. And then hysterically laughing later that night, watching the four of you learn the Cotton Ajo. The, how, the, how the four of you are your Lord of the Rings characters still boggles my mind to this day. Thank you again for so much for taking time out of your lives to come and meet us. And y'all stay blessed. Oh, that's very sweet. Yeah, if you guys want to see us uh, learn Cotton Eye Joe in real time, you can find it online. And we do stick to our Lord of the Rings characters, don't we? Because about halfway through it, Sean Astin falls flat on his uh, ass. I know. Yeah. I, I missed that happening. I, I thought, thought it was he, a bit. I thought he dived at you mm. for, as a fun thing. Mm. But I think he actually tripped. Yeah, he fell. But uh, if you watch it, you and I have it down cold. Cold, yeah. my yeah. friend. Um, favorite part of these conventions? Um, I, there's quite a lot of stuff, you know. I do um, I do enjoy the Q&As because it's nice to hear the stories as people tell it and, and getting the chance to sing their last goodbye was lovely. Just meeting people, just people saying hello and telling you what the the films mean to them and their family. I just I find it really fun. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely the best bit for me too. Just just meeting people and hear that, hearing their anecdotes of how it's moved through their social circles or their friends and stuff. But probably the standout things for me are the kids, are the new generation of kids. Yeah. So you've obviously got baby babies that probably have not seen the film, maybe sat on their mum and dad's knee while their mum and dad are watching the film, but they're dressed up as little hobbits or little Gandalfs and stuff, and that's adorable. But the kids that have seen it now that weren't alive when we were making the film, so you've mm. got nine, 10, 11 year old kids coming over and saying their favorite character is so-and-so. That for me is my favorite time of the weekend. So yay, thanks. Thanks for getting in touch. Nice, good accent. I love the accent, y'all. Hey guys, my name's Paul. Uh, I'm reading the new Star Wars book, Shadow of the Sith, by Adam Christopher. I just got to chapter nine and found that the point of view character is none other than Beaumont Ken, and I got really excited about that. So I don't know if you guys knew about that, but great book so far, and now it's getting even better with Beaumont back in the action. Ooh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't even know there was... There's a ton of Star Wars books. I there's a ton. Know. Yeah, there's a great series of Star, Star Wars. I don't know why I can't say Star, Star Wars. Books. Star books. Yeah, I'm thinking of Star books. Um, there's a trilogy of Star Wars books by a guy called Timothy Zahn, Z-A-H-N, that picks up pretty soon after Return of the Jedi. Han and Leia have kids, mm. a boy and a girl, twins, and they're both gifted with the Force. Yep. So... They're kind of training them to be Jedis. And Luke goes into hiding to not pull so much focus towards his sister and 
his now brother-in-law. And unfortunately, a kind of enemy shows up and threatens his family. So then Luke comes back out of hiding. But by that point, Luke is like on a completely different level He's of expertise. Training. He's incredible. I would highly recommend those books by Timothy Zahn. But that's great to hear that the character that I played in, in Star Wars, Beaumont Kin, everything right over there? Continues to, has a life. There's a Star Wars encyclopedia that you can buy, which talks over a couple of pages about the character that I played in Star Wars. And he was like a kind of straight A student at a galactic university and uh, like a co had a code breaking uh, talents. And then he wanted to go into the resistance and his parents didn't want him to. And so he, uh, what do you call that? Disassociated himself from his parents, does not see them anymore. And, but then became a kind of brilliant kind of um, code breaker in the resistance. So there's life in the old dog yet. Oh yeah, we'll see him again. Oh, Don't you we'll worry about him. that. But um, is anyone allowed to write a Star Wars book? I think Do you need to ask someone. Uh, yeah, I think if it's an official Star Wars book that has the little, you know, Disney Lucasfilm stamp but, on it. But, see, it wasn't. But fan fiction. I mean, we have fan fiction written all the time about Lord of the Rings characters. Don't yeah, we? but like if I if I wrote a Star Wars book with your character in it and 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 Leia or whatever, how it was a time travel thing, and then you've I, been thinking about this, yeah, yeah, and then I put it out there and it becomes a huge hit. Mm. Do I get to keep the money? Well, should we, we should make a few phone calls about that. Let's find out. Yeah, I'm going to do that before I put pen to paper. Yeah, yeah. Good. Should we bring on our guest? Hey, we've got a fantastic guest. And uh, this guest is basically is based around a, a sort of food and drink thing. So uh, we might actually move over to our new... Billions or meet the world. I don't section. see why we shouldn't use it. You know why wouldn't we use it? It looks fantastic it's sitting right there. And uh, when we get over there, we'll introduce you to Travis Sigler. I hope I pronounced that right. Sounds brilliant. To Could me. be Sigler. No, Sigler. Travis Sigler. Billy, we're yes. joined in our new uh, Billion Dollar Meet the World uh, stage set arena by Travis Sigler. Do you want to know a little bit about Travis Sigler? Before we ask him to speak. Before yeah. we actually see him, or maybe we'll see him now. Yeah. As read, we speak. Read the wonderful blurb while I open a lovely bottle of mead. M-E-A-D-E. -E, mead. Although we'll get into that. Yes. Travis Sigler. Taylor Tall and Travis Sigler have been friends for over a decade. That's 10 years now. Mm. In November of 2017, the pair came up with an idea for a small leather mead business. Travis had been doing leather work for a few years at this point, and the two of them began with their first batch of mead in Taylor's closet the summer of 2017. By 2018, Weird Leather and Mead opened its first location in Milwaukee, Oregon. After many months of planning on how to get launched, the first year was a bit of a struggle to get the meadery launched, but in March, they got their first commercial batch of semi-sweet traditional mead. In the fall of 2019, Taylor Toll and Travis Sigler brought on Doug Wingate, 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 who was a co-founder of the Mac Head, the Mac Mead Hall, and longtime follower of Weird, to the team and and as a new business partner. Together, the three continued to build their brand while operating at their w Milwaukee location. But, can, can I say, that was wonderfully read. Thank wonderfully you. Wonderfully read. Not easy. <laughs> and, um, but it wasn't, I, I met Travis. Yeah. But uh, maybe it wasn't Milwaukee, but I always think of them as Portland. But mm. anyway, without further delay, let's welcome Travis Sigler. Oh, Travis! Hey, hey how's, how's it going, it going guys? man? We've been trying to do this for a while, haven't we, Travis? And we finally it's, it's, got there. It's been a minute, yeah. Um, I don't remember when I sent the box to you guys of all the all the bottles. Well, mostly like... <laughs> you had to send two packages because Billy drank the first one. Yeah, they're absolutely delicious. Mm. No, it's not actually true. <laughs> I have never, as far as I know, in my life tasted mead. I haven't either, and we're going to taste the first one here. So you, you do a collection of different flavors of mead, Travis. And just before we started, I had said to you, which one should we start with first? Out the ones that we've got, and you said start with the honey pomegranate. Fine. Yeah. So what I was going to ask you guys is like, what do you know about mead? 
And I guess one of the questions was if you've ever had mead, but you just answered that. <laughs> Have you ever had it? Um, Never had mead. All I know is that it's made of honey. From honey. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mead is made with uh, honey, water, yeast. Um, and then oh. from there, like what you guys are drinking, you could add fruits or teas or really there's so many different flavors that you'll probably never run out of ideas for making mead. Um, but yeah, you guys are about to sip on the, the Forbidden Desire pomegranate. Forbidden uh, Desire, Dominic. <laughs> there you Cheers. go. Um, and the thing that defines mead, if you're comparing it to wine, is, is mm -hmm. simply that the, the difference is that it's made with honey. It has a honey it's kind made. of base. That is correct, yeah. Um, so basically, the sugars that get converted into alcohol come from the honey instead of with wine is usually grapes. Mm. So it kind of is very close to like a honey wine if uh, like pop culture or you know, if you're starting to hear about it um, popping up a little bit more. But it is the world's oldest alcoholic beverage. Mm. Um, it dates back to, I mean, Egyptian pharaohs, uh, Greek philosophers, Irish kings, the Viking era. Um, I mean, there's a Ethiopian honey wine called Tej. Um, so there's just, there's so many different types, um, spread throughout history and culture that, uh, I mean, you'll probably never run out of <laughs> different flavors, you know? Hey there. Did you ever read the fine print that appears when you start browsing using incognito mode on your phone? It says that your activity might still be visible to your employer, your school, or your internet provider. Not very incognito, huh? That's why to really stop people from seeing the sites you visit, you need to do what I do and use ExpressVPN. Think about the amount of times, Dom, you're using Wi-Fi at cafes, hotels, mm. you know, at other people's houses. Airports. I've, as you know, I've just been on location oh, I do. for, you know, quite a while. I was in different hotels, mm. the B&Bs and airports, and I always use Express. VPN because if you do that you don't need to worry when you're you're doing banking mm. or putting in passwords nobody can steal that stuff because Express VPN keeps you safe. Mm. What I love the most about Express VPN is how easy it is to mm -hmm. use. The app literally has one massive big on button. You tap it to turn it on. That's it. It works on all your devices, phones, computers, even your router so your whole family can stay private under one subscription. So stop letting people invade your online privacy. Protect yourself with the number one rated VPN at expressvpn.com slash onion. Use our link expressvpn.com slash onion to get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash onion to learn more. We deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to supplements. Ritual is creating a new standard with its first-of-a-kind visible supply chain. You can literally see where each labeled ingredient comes from right down to the supplier, whether it's vitamin D from the UK or omega-3 DHA from microalgae in Canada. I really like Ritual stuff. I, I, I've been taking the multivitamin. Mm -hmm. It's really high quality. It's got these... Um, minty kind of capsule so mm. they taste good they also use a delayed release capsule which is designed to dissolve later in your small intestine oh lovely which is an ideal place to absorb nutrients so if you're one of those people that maybe you take multivitamins but it gives you an upset stomach you won't get this with ritual these are supplements you can trust taking ritual is offering our listeners 10 percent off your first three months when you visit ritual.com slash onion to start your ritual today. How, 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 how do you go about making a mead? Yeah, how's it different That's my from, the, first question. from the wine fermentation process? Yeah. It's a great question. Well, so you've, yeah. got, you've got yourself a jar of honey and you're thinking to yourself, I'd rather have a bottle of mead. I'd like to get drunk. I'd rather get drunk <laughs> than have this on my yogurt. Mm. So how do I go about making this jar into a bottle of wine? Yeah, so basically there are about three stages of mead making. You got your primary, your secondary, and then usually like your aging or your bottling process where you would age it there as well. Um, the primary is where you take the honey 
you add yeast and water. Really, that's about all you need mm -hmm. um, to make a traditional mead. Um, I'm not sure how sciencey you guys want to go into this, but mm -hmm. <laughs> um, bit basically, a little, yeah, yeah, a little so, bit sciencey. Uh, yeah, um, to give you guys like the the easy kind of quick breakdown of it, mm -hmm. um, you know, you add your yeast in there. The yeast goes in there and it eats all the sugars from the honey and converts that into alcohol. Um, you know, in your primary, you got your CO2 kind of happening in there mm -hmm. as they're, as the yeasts are all gobbling down on all that honey kind of comes out. Um, usually in like the primary fermenter, you have like an airlock. So that way some of the, the CO2 gases can escape. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the, the, the primary stage. Uh-huh. Um, then you basically, oh man, there's a lot of sciencey stuff to it. Do you, do you, you want to take your... need to go to science. Yeah, just a little science. Yeah, little the, science. The quick, We've the got that science. up to now. It sounds like, um, the, that bread that everybody was making. During Sourdough. Lockdown. You're right. Mm, Carry on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically once you mix your honey, water and yeast, yep. then you want to take your gravity reading. Mm. Um, so you want, you want that number right at the start. Um, there's a whole bunch of different techniques that you can do to calculate that. Um, but basically you take your starting gravity and then your final gravity, multiply that by 131, and then you get your ABV, <laughs> um, wow. which is your, al your alcohol by volume. And basically the whole process of the mead making journey, you, you want to constantly test it and see what your current uh, gravity reading is. So that way, you can kind of figure out, hey, I want a 13% mead, or hey, yeah. I want it to be 12 or 10. Um, and and what, sorry, what, and what, when does it get drinkable? When when can you drink it? Um, basically, at I would get past the primary stage into the secondary. Once you get your mead to the kind of desired percentage level, then you can throw some uh, there's some stuff called potassium sorbate. Um, love it. This I love potassium. Basically, yeah, uh, this basically kills off the yeast or kind of brings it to a halt, so that way nothing keeps fermenting. Cool. Then you can move that, which is called the racking process, over into another fermenter, and then this is where you would add your fruit or um, your teas. Then from there, you pretty much let it sit for a few months. Um, All right. Then after that. You just kind of taste it along the way, and if it's your kind of desired sweetness level, then you can, or dryness level, or wh whatever your uh -huh. your notes that you're trying to hit. Um, basically, then you just bottle. You can bottle it and then let that age even longer. Um, <laughs> so it's it's a bit of a process. Um, mostly, once it gets mixed into a fermenter, it just kind of sits there for, depending on how long you want to make this mead for. Some people have aged, you know, you can age them for four months. Some people age them for like two years. Um, Does it get stronger the, cool, the longer, you, longer you age them? The flavor notes will change. Um, but so you, I think you, you guys... You put it in the fermenter. It's not like a whiskey that you put in a barrel and let it age you, in a barrel, or can you? You could, uh -huh. yeah. Um, so a lot of people, what they'll do and what we want to do too with our company is eventually we want to take some of our mead flavors and age them in a like a whiskey barrel um, to get some of those tannins, and, um, you know, or like bourbon barrels or anything mm. like that, get some of those notes to come through. That's uh, a good idea. I think, yeah. I think that because that's the sort of difference, isn't it? When between like Scots whiskey and American mm. whiskey is we have those barrels with, um, you know, sometimes bourbon or sherry or whatever. And it takes a lot of those flavors and, and gives it a lot of different notes. Mm. What's this one, Doc? What we're drinking here, Billy, is the, is the, blackberry? Is the Berserker Blackberry, and I actually yeah. like this just a little bit more than the first one that we had. It's my favourite up to now. Now, is Berserker, is that from, is that a Lord of the Rings reference or not? <laughs> or a Vi Viking, um, maybe? It's very, it's very mixed, so our whole vibe with our business, right, is careful. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, have, a, I, have, a, I have a drink. <laughs> I, have, I have a drinking problem. Um, you know, our whole vibe... It very kind of goes down to honestly mm. Lord of the Lord of the Rings for me. Nice um, I grew up with Tolkien, um, Middle Earth, so 
and watching you guys on 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 the screen so it's just it's a huge honor to be here with you guys oh that's fun uh, um and so to answer your question about the berserker we kind of went with a like kind of like a biking mm-hmm. you know kind of style on there yeah that bottle though i think billy when you messaged me earlier today you mm-hmm. were asking about milwaukee versus portland locations yeah so it's a good indicator to see how old that meat is because I can't remember which ones I sent you. Um, if the BlackBerry says Milwaukee on it, no, this one means this one's bottled in Portland, Oregon. Portland, okay. So any of the ones that might say um, Milwaukee on there, those ones have been aging for at least two years now mm-hmm. um, since our old location. Mm-hmm. Then we moved from our tiny little shop over to our new whole medieval hall. Um, here in Portland, and then that's kind of a. So when you were messaging about that, I was like, "Oh man, did I send him some old, some, some old, older old bottles?" Old, <laughs> old stuff but it's good, good, you know it. It ages pretty well, so I, I think say, it's. I think it's all from Portland. And when I when I yeah. when I first met you, uh, Travis, I think that's what really kind of I found really intriguing is you. I saw some pictures of your place, which is called Weird, right? W Y R D. Weird leatherworks and metery, yeah. And you brought me a, a, a leather bracelet, sort of. The Leaf of Lorien. Which you is. Still got it? <laughs> yeah, I've still got it. It's beautiful. I yeah. love it. And I've got some coasters and stuff. And it's just beautiful work. But then when I saw the hall that you guys have got, which I have to, you, you have to tell people where it is. I know it's in Portland. Whereabouts in Portland is it? We're off of 41st and Holgate. So if you're ever in Portland, Oregon, just hit up, you know, you can Google it. Honestly, we're starting to get so big and kind of travel-y now yeah. that we're having people show up from New York, Florida, Georgia, yeah. and like they're like, weird is the place that we have to go to like right when we get off the plane. Yeah, we want to come um, if we get to Portland. We, we need to yeah. go. I had, I had one day I could have went, and this is, this is always a thing with me. I didn't go because I was super tired. Mm. And then as soon mm. as I got home, I was like, I should have went. It's always worth doing that oh, extra little, really? yeah, isn't it? Is, it is. Because otherwise you've got a, a night in a hotel room that you could have at any time. And I could have went to your place and it's beautiful. It's got big open fires. You're just expecting Strider to be sitting there with his pipe. Mm. The, all the soups and the stews that you guys, I mean, I look at them and I'm like, oh, wow, that looks fantastic. So the next time, me, in fact, me and Dom will come up we'll for sure. We'll go next time, yeah. Um, and we'll definitely drink some mead and eat some uh, of that soup. How'd you like that one? How'd you like that I like that one better, actually, Travis. I, I do too. The, the blackberry? Yeah. It's just a little yeah. bit more. I think uh, that's beautiful. Complex. It's still got the honey, but because of the sweetness of the, the blueberries, mm. I find it a, a more wait, wait, complicated. Did you get the blueberry or the blackberry? No, this Black, is blackberry. Yeah. Yeah. Billy, Billy's drunk blackberry, already. Okay. I'm absolutely <laughs> pissed here. Travis. Well, while you, while you drink your mead, let me I'll read you a little blurb here because this will make you feel great about what you're Give drinking. Us that over, would you? Yeah, enjoy yourself. Open another bottle. Says here the ancient Greeks called mead ambrosia. Yes, they did. Yes, or nectar, and it was believed to be the drink of the gods. Woo-hoo! Descended from the heavens as dew before being gathered in by the bees. Because of this belief, it is easy to see why the ancients thought mead had magical and sacred properties mm-hmm. and would prolong life, bestow health, strength, virility, recreative powers, wit. And poetry. I well, mean, you should have some of that then, yeah, shouldn't you? Yeah, we definitely need to be a little bit more human. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a it's an alcohol full of mythology, isn't it? Which makes me understand a little bit more how maybe it weaves into that Tolkien-esque world because that's also one of our great modern mythologies as well. Billy. And it, it's just lovely, up. though. I, that's what I mean. When I saw your place, you're like, well, I'd just like to go there for an evening. Well, and go just, then. Well, I would like to, well, Dom. why didn't you that night? Well, I was tired, <laughs> Dom. Well, you you're see. always tired, you see. But just to kind of switch off from, like, normal life. Mm. And, and look, there's a Hobbit map. and all, You just feel like you're on an adventure, <laughs> don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. What have we got here? Right, so wait till it's... I tell you, Dom. Oh. Jasmine Dragon. Oh, I imagine this to be quite, Ooh, this a, quite a subtle mead, but I don't oh, know. Well, you could be wrong, mm, Dom. see. You guys want me to go into different types of mead? Yes, please. Oh, please. So what you're drinking right there is technically called a methaglin. Ooh. Um, so Great a methaglin, <laughs> a methaglin is a mead made with like teas or herbs and spices. Um, what you previously had a second ago is a mellow mel, is I'm a mead with you. fruits. I could have told you that. Billy, what's wrong? I'm going to start again because I didn't want the blackberry on it. Well, I'm going to start again That's as well. Smart. 
I've got I want... blackberry on mine. We'll use that as a wash. Sorry, sorry, Travis. Carry on. No. Please continue, Travis. Yeah. So whoa, it's made whoa, with whoa. a tea or something. What's well, sorry? Try to get me drunk. Get tra- and then we can dance. <laughs> then we can dance. Right, go on, go on, Travis. A method You can search far and wide. Mm. <laughs> um. So yeah. So there's all sorts of types of mead. There. Um, some of the most common ones are mellow mills made with fruit, mm. the methaglin like you're drinking there. Um, the other one on the end of the table there, that magic apple, that's a sizer. So it's instead of water, we used apple cider from a local farm here. Um, it's a place I go, I've been going since I was a kid um, during like the, the pumpkin patch time of the year. Oh. Um, the apples are harvested and fresh pressed and we immediately put it into a fermenter from that local farm. And we do it once a year. So that bottle, we only do that flavor once a year. Um, yeah, the magic apple. Um, and I figured, you know, Lovely. you guys would like apples. <laughs> we do like apples. Uh, I'm obsessed with apples. Billy likes apples yeah. as well, but I am literally obsessed with apples. Yeah. Billy, Billy paid me one of the greatest compliments he's ever paid me a few months ago on the show where he said he's never met another human that eats as many apples as me. And I was like, wow, that's one of the nicest things you've ever said. I, d- I wasn't meant to be. I know. I just took it as a compliment. It was Thanks. just a fact. Yeah, it's true. Cheers. Hey, Cheers. I'll read you another amazing thing here that I just read about mead, because this is fantastic. Ooh. Hang on. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's a strange one, isn't it? I like that one. It, it that's changed, got a lot yeah. going on. Hey, check this out, Bills. That's more like a, a spirit. It is a little bit more of a kind of a, a spirit, like, a stronger alcoholic taste. Yeah. Carry on. All right, here you go. The mythology of mead exists in our culture today, unnoticed by most The very term honeymoon comes from the ancient tradition of giving bridal couples a month's worth or moon's worth of honey wine or mead. This was long ago thought to ensure virility and fertility and a fruitful union. In fact, the payment to the mead maker was often increased dependent on the promptness and the male gender of the firstborn child. So if the married (laughs) couple had a son first, maybe they tipped the mead maker a little extra because he's the guy that made him... Fertile. <laughs> yeah, this one, like Billy said, this one has more kind of stronger alcohol tones than the fruity flavors. But I like it. I like alcohol, me. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. It's a nice. Uh, let me see if I can get the jasmine out of that. Hold on. Yeah, it's yeah, more like, been... as you said, Travis, it's like a tea or something. I can really like, like leaves. Mm. I can. So, what we did with that flavor is. Um... We wanted to make a, we make a few different methaglins. Um, the Jasmine Dragon, if you guys are familiar with Avatar, The Last Airbender. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. On, Net, on, Net, on Nickelodeon. Of course, uh, uh, Israel Adesanya's favorite uh, animated TV show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a, one of my favorite all-time characters, Uncle Iroh. Mm. Got his hey! tattoo here on my, on my arm. Very cool. Um, he opened a tea shop in that show called the Jasmine dragon and he's Ah. just all about tea. So, you know, we're a bunch of nerds around here. So we, we always incorporate all sorts of, um, inspirations from things. Listen, what we did with that, we're nerds too. Ah. Oh, Billy, watch yourself. We love, we love people, uh, expressing, uh, pride in being nerds because, (laughs) you know, in my mind, at least being a nerd just means that you have a very strong interest in something. And you know what? Those people make the world go round. They, you know, they really have the passion to change the world. So it does seem that you guys are completely lovely. The sound of success. Look at that pop. Right? (laughs) You guys are completely immersed in this mead world and, uh, and leather and leather and and video games. We can't wait to come visit you. I'm going to use this as a wash. I'm using that as a wash, you know, slush that out. So tell us, tell us, um, uh, uh, a normal day for you, Travis. Yeah. At, at weird leather and mead. Oh man, that's uh, <laughs> I'm all over the place, really. Um, so, as you guys know, I do a bunch of leather work. Um, mm. I not to be sniffed at. O- <laughs> often, kind of drawn inspiration in all my work from Lord of the Rings. You know, I've met Billy a few times at Con with our cosplay family. You know, we are all dressed up in our like Rohirrim kind of mm. cosplays yeah. i actually have my helmet right here oh Amy great uh, <laughs> great taste yeah no the gondorians um, are not a classy race it's the Ro. it's the rohan people the that have, <laughs> they, have, they just have a little bit more kind of style and panache yeah but they smell a horse taters smell a horse taters but they make them to need you know <laughs> go on but, Travis. yeah so you know growing up 
before the start of Weird, I was, you know, I, I was and am a cosplayer. So I started making my own leather armor and mm -hmm. cosplay and stuff like that. Now I'm trying to get more of my work kind of out there in the film industry and trying to get more like just armor pieces and stuff like yeah. that to try to, you know, up my artist uh, creativity mm. um, for the leather working side. Also the mead making side. So I'm kind of on like both sides here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so some days I will go in and I will just be hammering out belts and, you know, medieval garby type items, bracers. Um, and then some days it's like I'm in the warehouse and we're filtering, you know, 500 gallons of mead <laughs> mm -hmm. or bottling or whatever. Um, and then some days, like on the weekends, we do like our medieval hall nights where it's people can come in, they can get the charcuterie boards, they can get the soups and I'm hammering out food or I'm in the back crushing dishes. You know, it's just kind of, I'm all over the place. Really. But isn't that interesting? Isn't that brilliant? Like you get an interest and then that yeah. is your business now. Right. Oh, you know, what I just thought in real time just mm -hmm. then. Travis and look if it, if this isn't if this doesn't work then it doesn't work but Billy and I have been doing live podcasts around the nation Ooh, over the past going. few months and I just thought wouldn't that be a perfect place to set up a live podcast at your you guys tavern? are welcome anytime you, you have to if wait you to guys want to come up well, here good. but do you know what I mean you're are we invited, invited? <laughs> we could have a you we guys could, are both we could have a slightly boozy uh, live podcast edition where we drink a little bit of mead we could have some uh, Sweet rolls from the guy from the game Skyrim. Um, you get to have the whole fireplace behind you and the fire and the cobblestone and the medieval tables. And let's like do fun. it. Sounds like let's fun do it. Me. Let's organize Always it. Welcome. We'll we'll head yeah. up there. Cool. That sounds fantastic. And, uh, and as I say, I've seen pictures of your place. It looks incredible. We have just moved into a new studio. I love what, it. What would you recommend? Yeah. Yeah. On on the walls and stuff. Yeah. Could you get, could you give us a piece of leather or something bit. or a little yeah. something to help us out? A little well, weird leather, or, or, you know what I mean? Maybe I'll uh, tool up. You know, I made I think I made Billy a couple of coasters before, but it had an yeah. onion on there. Yeah, but maybe I'll make a bigger one mm. with a bigger onion on there and do the yeah. friendship onion yeah. tooled Would you? into this big piece of leather that you guys can throw up there. You get some swords and some axes and stuff, and I yeah. think you guys are all set. Sounds great. <laughs> well, Sounds like if, great. if you did that for us, Travis, we'd love that. And uh, we'd love yeah. to come up to Weird Leather and Mead up there in Portland and do a live uh, Friendship Onion. Mm. Anytime. Yeah. Now, this, always this last one, this apple one that we're drinking now, this is the sweetest of the four that we've had. It's almost like a dessert Sh wine, like a port it or a sherry. Be, it should be the sweetest. Um let me just give you a, a tiny little mm -hmm. end cap on that Jasmine Dragon really quick. Oh, yeah, Jasmine Dragon. The, the thought. Yeah. Um, we used jasmine flowers and a green tea, and we steeped ah. it. We steeped the whole mead in there and let it kind of age on that um, just to kind of get those notes kind of coming through on, on, on that flavor. Mm. Um, the Magic Apple is a super special mead to me. Um, because it's named after my grandpa's woodworking shop when he was alive. Mm. Um, so if you read the back of the bottle, it says in memory of Richard Wershey on there. And that's, uh, that's my grandpa on my dad's side, but he had a woodworking yeah. shop called yeah. magic apple. Very cool. And, uh, so yeah, it's just, you know, that one was really, really special to me. Mm. Um, but it's also one of my favorites because I love sweet stuff. Mm. So, um, almost there was no water really in that one it's just all apple cider and then Lovely. we add the honey and then we add the yeast so the yeast they had a lot of <laughs> sugars to feed off of on that one i might be overreaching here travis but bear with me and william you do the yeah. same but this with a little cheese plate oh crackers oh, yeah. maybe a little some some fig chutney Maybe some blue cheese. Write all, all this olives. down because Dom will want this when he yeah, arrives, I mean, you know. Little, a little, we have charcuterie boards. Oh, charcuterie. We have a little rosemary, got, some rock salt. He'll, oh, have, he'll yeah. have your Rohan helmet mm. on mm. by the end of this ball. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there you go. This just goes, it goes so well that's with lovely. cheese, I would yeah, expect. Yeah, I think it would. Ooh. I think you're right. Mm. I mean, that's why we do the charcuterie boards at the hall because oh, yeah, that'd be perfect. people come in, they get a glass of mead or they get a flight and then they can... Um, they just sip the mead and 
eat the cheese and the mm. meats and the breads and all that kind of stuff. So that's I mean, what definitely the, the vibe that we're going for. What could be nice? It also says here in this blurb that mead is the fastest growing segment of the American alcoholic beverage industry. Wow. So to all the budding entrepreneurs and beekeepers, it seems that this fermented honey drink is tiptoeing out from the shadows and has the potential to amass a fortune. So get brewing. That's a get, little bit of competition the competition for you there, Get the mead on. So, I'll tell you what, that's fantastic. Oh, should we give us some scores, Dom? Oh, now are we scoring the whole experience? The whole, the whole I think thing. that's a good shout because it's hard to separate them. Can you juggle? What's oh, this? I definitely can't juggle mead corks. Good. Oh, <laughs> Not bad. So, <laughs> so okay, so taste slash flavor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to go off the best one that I've had, which for me was the apple one. I'm going to give that a solid 9.4 out of 10. It's nice. Because I, I generally don't like sweet dessert winey type things, but there's something to that. I hear what you're saying because sometimes a dessert wine, it's just it feels a little simple in the air. Yeah, well, like but a syrup. this one, the blackberry, yeah, there's something very special about this, Travis. Mm. I like it a lot. It's my first time on mead, and I'm going to give it a nine point six. A nine point six. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And then aesthetics or look i mean obviously you guys care quite a lot about the design because the design of these bottles is fantastic i love bees but the whole design mm. uh, you were you were generous enough to send us a couple of t-shirts which are radical as well so in terms of design i'm giving that a 10 out of 10 i think that's pretty perfect yeah i think uh that the t-shirt that you're wearing just now actually travis is yeah. one is one oh. of my favorite t-shirts mm, i've got one too really yeah, yeah i love it yeah. i love the fit of it yes. you've obviously send us a Send us a photo. We'll we will. post you guys. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. When I was first commissioning this art from a local friend of mine, and he has art in our hall on consignment, um, I used to work with him at Dark Horse Comics. Uh, we, you know, I was like, I want something that kind of symbolizes the protection of honeybees because honeybees are, you know, drastically getting closer to the endangered species list. I know, Dom, you're very mm. um, proactive about animals and bugs. Mm -hmm. or no, what was it you said? Bugs and mm. bugs are animals. Altogether. Yeah, insects. Um, yeah, insects. <laughs> on one of those podcast episodes a while back. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but so we wanted to symbolize something that kind of shows our efforts on protection, the protection of honeybees mm -hmm. um, and, and honey in general. Um, so that's kind of why we have a shield with a honeybee on there to kind of show ah, the defense nice, of nice. honeybees. Um, they uh, they fit very well. You've obviously spent money on your merchandise, and you know you care about how things look. I think it's brilliant. Um, I'm going to give it a nine point eight. A nine point eight. Now this yes. is where Travis, you might need to help us oh, yeah. because the final category is usefulness. Now apart from getting <laughs> getting pissed, <laughs> what what other ways can you usefully use mead? Could you could you stir it into a dessert, a cake, a pie? Let us know. A soup. What, could, mm. what else so, could you do with mead other than just stick got, it down your throat? You've got to burn off the alcohol, haven't you? Yeah. So we have like a, like a community group on Facebook and people collect our bottles. And I see people posting stuff in there all the time about, you know, I just cooked candied bacon with some of this mead. Um, I put some of this mead in my soup. Um, I've marinated these meats in mead. I just did... Um, we did a rainbow sherbet mead and I marinated a rack of ribs in it. Ooh. That was amazing. Okay. Um, so you can cook with it. Yeah. You can drink it. You can take it as a great um, conversation starter uh -huh. at a party yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, Exa most people yeah. show up with a bottle of wine. You show up with a bottle of mead and people are like, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You know? And an axe so, and a helmet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They'll go. be like, no, he's doing this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that sounds um, very useful, though. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty useful. I, I'm going to try that. Because I, I like to marinade. Yeah. So I I think I'm going to keep the scores high. Mm. And I'm going to give that, as I've not tried it yet, an 8.7. Nice. Yeah, I've revised my score because I was going to give it a low score in terms of usefulness until you told us, Travis. So I'll give it, I've not done any of these things either. I'll give it a 7.5. Well, I think a that's pretty progress. good. Well, that, that's high scores for weird leather and mead. Yeah, Travis, <laughs> yes. it's been great having you on. We uh we say this all the time, but we we always have guests on that work from a place of passion, and clearly mm -hmm. you're super passionate about uh, about what you do, and it shows in your product, and we absolutely love it. And thanks for the gifts and the mead and the t-shirts, we really love them. And for people listening out there, whether you're in Portland or wherever you are, if you're going out for dinner, have a look in the neighborhood and see 
what's locally owned, see what people are making. I mean, look at the passion of these guys, the time that they're taking to make this from scratch, to have their own place, to have that art up there, to be making food, to make a place that's beautiful that people want to go to. Look in your neighborhood for those kind of places. Absolutely. And send us more t-shirts, Travis. Yeah. Send oh, us more I will. <laughs> yeah. Small. You guys Always mind. small. Wait, are you small? Medium. I'm small. I'm small. I like to wear small my t-shirts kind of tight, you know, tight. Like well, a, we like will a definitely builder. come up. If you if you yeah, will we'd have us, let's figure that we'd out. love of to course. come up. I think that would be a brilliant one. Well, a fantastic Eat. location to do a podcast that very every so often talks about Lord of the Rings. Fantastic. We're kind of the makers and the starters of the business, but the whole place couldn't run without my entire crew. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Devin, Christian, Luthien, Jaden, April, Anastasia, Doug, and Taylor. Um, thank you guys for everything. Um, along this whole entire journey of like five years, like without our weird crew and everybody making things work, it would not run as smooth. And like, that's kind of how we're held together as a tight knit family. And um, yeah. And then also very tail end. I know I wanted to mention this to you guys. Um, you guys play league of legends. Yeah. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, so my buddy and I, Ian, we have a Twitch channel called Gondor Bros Gaming. Got little coasters here. Oh, no. um, See, Gondor. Gondor been, well, we cosplay Faramir and Boromir. So nice. we, we did Gondor Bros Gaming. Um, we've been talking about League of Legends. We have never played. We were wondering if you guys would show us how to play a couple of rounds. Oh, interesting. Um, I've never played it before. And I think having experts like you guys might, you know, might make it fun. <laughs> Just call um, it as experts. <laughs> Almost professional. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're the best players too, you know. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've never played before. So, yeah. <laughs> I think we could maybe make that. If you if you invite us up to Weird Leather and Mead, I think the least we can do is give you a game of League of Legends. And that's true. That's true. Heck yeah! I know you guys are super passionate about it, so I just yeah, it's fun. It's just it great. It's just such a fun game. Well, Travis, thanks again. Thanks for all the gifts. Thanks for the mead. You guys go check them Thank out. Thank you, online. guys. Yeah. Weird Meadery. And is, is it Leatherworks and Oh, Meadry. Weird Leatherworks and Meadry. Check them out online. Thanks, Travis. Take Thanks, easy, Travis. Man. That was great, man. Thank you, Thank guys, you. so See much. It. Fantastic. Yeah. I've ended up with all the mead. Yeah, good for you. That was great. Yeah. What, a, what a great thing. Now, we only had a couple of little sips of each one. So well, we're just not, enough to taste it, we're though. We're not inebriated, but it was very tasty. And I'm so happy that we finished with the final one, the apple one, because that was my favorite. Yeah, it's very nice. So if you get a chance... Uh, go online and see uh, Weird, W-Y-R-D, uh, Leather, Leather and, and Meadery. Meadery. And if you're in Portland, definitely go. It looks fantastic. I think we'll go there and definitely do a live. I mean, that just sounds like it's, it's so too beautiful. perfect. It's a kind of an old tavern, a little bit like out of Lord of the Rings, where they drink mead, play Skyrim. I know. And we could do our podcast from there. We've got to get that sorted out. It's amazing. And uh, he's going to send some stuff to put in the walls of the new studio, which I love. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, the shelf of goodness. We'll put some more stuff. If you've got anything you'd like to see in Billy Ex and Dom Eat the World, we'll Exactly. If you would like to feature on the shelf of goodness, uh, send it our way. And of course, if you'd like to uh, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast, it always helps. Leave comments on our YouTube channel. Uh, 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 Where well, the merchandise uh, at uh, the uh, Friendship, Friendship Onion, Onion Podcast. Podcast. Dot com. That's where you get the t-shirts, etc. And you can leave voice messages for us at speakpipe forward slash the Friendship Onion. We'll see you next week on the Friendship Onion. Toodles! Harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. 